Hi team, welcome to the Kindness, Curiosity and Comfortable Shoes podcast. My name is James McFetridge and this is an ongoing toolkit for all healthcare staff. Whether you are a porter or a paediatrician, a domestic or a driver, clinical or non-clinical, just starting or just finishing your work in healthcare, this podcast aims to give you some useful thoughts about working for this amazing business to get you through your day. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're finding that these thoughts in the podcast are useful and fulfilling the promise of being a toolkit for healthcare workers. I really want to make sure that these podcasts are accessible to all and there are obviously costs to setting up and uh, running them. So if you feel these podcasts have helped you, please help me to help others. You can support me by going to buymeacoffee.com slash jmaceducation. That's buymeacoffee, all one word, dot com slash jmaceducation and support me there. Or if you're listening through the podcast website at kccpodcast.buzzsprout.com, click on the heart at the top right to support the show up there. And if you can help me, then I can make this more accessible. And the thing I really want to do next is get a transcription service available for each of the episodes for those people who want to get involved, uh, but they cannot listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for your help. Today I am going to think a little bit about reflection. So I first mentioned this in episode eight about feedback and feedback I always think of as what you get from other people but reflection is kind of feedback to yourself and just a way of thinking about how you're working and seeing how you can improve on that. And I think it's one of those things that we probably don't give as much time to as we should. So the definition of reflection is that it is a noun where you are giving something serious thought or consideration. And often in healthcare, we're just so busy, we're not getting that opportunity to probably think about the work that we've done and how we are managing that, how we are analysing that and how we can take things forward for the future. And clearly, if we want to be better at our work, absolutely, we should be doing this. But firstly, there's not much time. And secondly, it's kind of been taken over as a dirty word uh, as part of an appraisal process. If something happens, you write a reflective piece on it. And I think a lot of people, myself included, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. I don't really know what I'm writing about or quite what the purpose of it is. So often if you have to do something like that, uh, maybe as part of some academic work or part of your appraisal, we just write down a few words about how we feel and and think that's it. But it, it really should be so much more than that. And I think we probably all can reflect. I think some people are perhaps better reflectors than others. And I think about how I reflect and think about my work best. It's probably just having a chat to someone about it. So that's the first thing. If you do have to write something down for whatever purpose, start by thinking about how you would have that thought process as a conversation if you're explaining it to someone and just write that down just exactly as you think. Don't make it academic. Just write down your thoughts about whatever episode of work that you are reflecting on. So that's a really helpful start just to make it conversational. So thinking through that may kind of think, well, that's just me writing down something that happened, maybe having a bit of a chat to someone. But the next stage is trying to make that beneficial for you in your work. And this is where there's a lot of educational research in that. Now, I don't want to make this too heavy, but there are just three things that I'm going to talk about 
just to demonstrate this isn't just me rambling on, there is uh, some good evidence uh, behind this. And there are things that you may have come across. So firstly, there's Kolb's learning cycle, and this is all about how we learn. And clearly, one of the points of reflection is to be able to learn from that. So Kolb's uh, learning cycle, gosh, has been kicking around about uh, 40 years or so. And it's a four-stage process where you firstly have an experience, then you reflect on that experience, then you learn from that experience, so you, I call it very jargony, abstract conceptualization, and then you take what you have learnt and actively experiment the next time you have a similar issue or similar clinical experience and then once you have that then you go back through and reflect on it so that's the first stage that we should always be in that kind of spiral it's described as a circle but it's a spiral because you're kind of moving on but a key part of that obviously is that reflective observation and there was some work by Gibbs that describes this in a bit more detail and I'll put references for this in the show notes if you are interested in it so the Gibbs reflective cycle goes into that aspect of reflection a bit more clearly and describing the several stages that we go through. So firstly, there's a description of an experience, thinking about the feelings about that experience, then evaluating it, both thinking what was good and bad, analysing it to make sense of it, concluding what you have learned, and then creating an action plan. And if you think about perhaps sitting down with someone over a coffee and talking about experience, we're pretty good at describing what's happened so we can explain to the person we're talking to exactly what was going on. We're pretty good at explaining our feelings and thoughts about an experience because that comes very naturally if you're having a conversation. And we may just get on to that evaluation whether we thought something was good or bad but then we tend to stop and this is the key point about reflection is just to make that next step to make it more useful educationally so the next step is analyzing what has happened analyzing your feelings and that evaluation of the experience to make sense of the situation to try and really understand what happened and your part in that experience and what things made you act in a certain way what things made you interact with a team in a certain way and then come to some kind of conclusion about what you learned and what you could have done differently and even then we don't stop because then you need to make an action plan about how you deal with a similar situation in the future or just general changes that might be helpful so that's reflective cycle now that even that is fairly tricky to work through so what a lot of people end up doing is the what so what or now what framework for reflective practice and this was uh, published 20 or so years ago uh, by uh, a guy called uh, Rolf and so this is what I really want to focus on because I think this is the real take-home message for me. It's very easy to remember and as long as we're asking ourselves those analytical questions then that's a really helpful way for us to move things forward. So I'm just going to go through in a bit more detail the what, so what and now what. So if we start off with the what. That's very much thinking about what actually happened. Just describing the situation exploring the facts that we have about particular actions or decisions that we're making and also starting to think about the impact those actions or decisions may have had on us or our colleagues. So trying to drill down what we're thinking when we made certain decisions at certain points in a clinical situation. Thinking also what were the consequences for other people, what were the feelings that I had and the feelings for other people? And what was, just start to think what was good or bad about that and therefore what can be improved. So that's the first stage of that what. 
The next stage is, so what? Literally, it is just, so what? So what is the significance of what's happened? Why does it matter? Is it just a one-off? Or is there some significance because this is a recurrent problem or a situation we may find ourselves in the future and therefore we need to analyse things a bit more? So the questions that you may want to think about yourself in the so what phase, what does this tell me about how I interact with other people in the, the team? What was I making my decisions based on? What information was I getting from this situation to make my decision and do things? What else could I have done? Are there other ways that I could have managed this? And then starting to think, what have I actually learned from the situation about myself and about the context that I was in? So we're starting to explore a bit more about what happened in that situation. And then coming on to finally, now what? What does this actually mean for the future? This has all happened. We've described what happened. We've thought a bit about why it is important. And now, what are we going to do in the future? So what processes that do we need to go through? What opportunities are there from that experience to help us define our future actions? And that may be as simple as, do things need to be better? Because we can reflect on something that went okay. Maybe have gone brilliantly. So what aspects went well and what aspects, if they went well, can we bring into future episodes? But perhaps if it didn't go so well, what other resources are there? What do I need to do to try and improve? Do I need to get support from other people? Are there things that I have recognised in this reflective process that show that I'm learning from something or maybe I've identified a gap in my knowledge that I need to do something different? And are there any wider considerations beyond just me and my interaction with the situation? Are there bigger situational, maybe structural processes as part of the organisation that we're in, that part of that now what? So I'm just going to leave you with that as something that I think is really helpful if certainly if you are asked to do a reflective piece and you're not quite sure how to put it all together, think what happened, so what, what's it mean, and now what, what am I going to do in the future? But also really useful for anything that just happens at work that makes you start thinking, what can I do differently about this? This feels like a learning event. Scribble it down on a piece of paper, file it away somewhere, or it clearly could be something more um, formal as part of your appraisal process. But start with just give it a go. Next time you have something at work that happens that when you are on your way home makes you think a bit more deeply, just think about those three phrases. So I hope that's helpful for you. Give it a go. And as always, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. Let me know what you thought about this episode. I am on at JMAC Education on all the socials. And there are links in the show notes for anything that we've talked about today that may be of interest or further reading for you. Oh, I'd be really grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe. And most importantly, if you found this helpful, please tell your colleagues about this podcast. So please take care of yourselves out there. You are doing a great job. And remember, be kind, be curious, and don't forget your comfortable shoes. Thank you to Shakina Studio for the music downloaded through Audio Jungle. Thank you to Beth for the artwork and the photo produced through Canva and thank you to Buzzsprout for hosting the podcast. The Kindness, Curiosity and Comfortable Shoes podcast is a JMAC Education production.